All right. Mm -hmm. uh, good afternoon. Happy Monday? Indeed. Well, good Monday at least. Um, as you know, the Secretary General will be meeting, it's meeting just about now with uh, President uh, Mahmoud Abbas of the Palestinian Authority. Uh, and as you're aware, uh, Palestine will succeed Egypt as the chair of the group of G77 bloc of developing nations, and the Secretary General and uh, Mr. Abbas will participate in the handover ceremony, which takes place tomorrow. Uh, an update on Yemen. Uh, to date, the Redeployment Coordination Committee held two joint meetings, which brought together the RCC representatives of the government of Yemen and the Houthis in Hodeidah. In the last week, due to the inability of the parties to have a joint uh, meeting, the chair, General Patrick Hammert, has shuttled between the RCC representatives, meeting each side twice, seeking to find a mutually acceptable way forward for the redeployment of forces from the three ports and critical parts of the city associated with humanitarian facilities, as, to prov as provided uh, for in phase one of the Stockholm Agreement. Uh, well, projected timelines have slipped. Recent discussions have been constructive. Uh, the chair continues to encourage the parties to resume the joint meetings in order to finalize a mutually agreed redeployment plan. Currently, plans are being discussed on how to facilitate humanitarian operations. And the Under Secretary General for Peace Operations, Jean-Pierre Lacroix, is in The Hague today in the Netherlands to attend a high-level conference on UN peacekeeping organized by the Netherlands and Rwanda. The meeting aims to prepare the grounds for the UN peacekeeping ministerial meeting scheduled to take place in New York on March 29th. The Under Secretary General delivered keynote address in which he stressed the importance of working in partnership to deliver on the commitments of the Secretary General's Action for Peacekeeping initiative. He said the upcoming ministerial meeting will provide an excellent opportunity to explore how to collectively generate specialized and high-performing capabilities. While at The Hague, the Under Secretary General um, also spoke with European Union representatives about boosting the contribution of EU member states to UN peacekeeping operations through smart rotations. He met with the Dutch Foreign Minister, Stef Bloch, and thanked the Netherlands for its participation in UN peacekeeping operations and for its strong support for the Action for Peacekeeping agenda. Staying on peacekeeping, the Central and Central African Republic, our humanitarian colleagues, tell us that an estimated 12 to 15,000 people have fled from uh, Bakuma town and nearby villages since December 31st of last year. They were fleeing due to clashes between uh, the, FR, the FPRC and the UPC uh, groups, combatants and armed men with anti-Balaka uh, members. The majority of inter internally displaced people have sought refuge in Bangasu town, that's in the southeast of the country, near the border with the Democratic Republic of the Congo. They were provided with humanitarian aid uh, by the UN and NGOs, including food, non-food item, and health services. The Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs uh, says it has deployed an emergency team to scale up coordination, but rural areas remain inaccessible due to insecurity and the growing mobilization of armed people. And the 80th uh, session of the Committee for the Rights of Child opened today in Geneva. Uh, the High Commissioner for Human uh, Rights, Michel Bachelet, noted that this year marks the 30th anniversary of the Convention, which by, is, by, is by far the most ratified human uh, rights treaty. She said that advances have been made in reducing poverty and enhancing child survival, but that in other areas of the Sustainable Development Goals, progress lags behind. Ms. Bachelet said that children are particularly vulnerable to trafficking and slavery, with millions of girls becoming mothers while they are still children. And the UN Conference on Trade and Development, otherwise known as UNCTAD, today said the global trade in creative goods and services expanding mostly because of China. Creative goods and services including the fashion, design, media, and software industries, among others. In its newest report, UNCTAD says that from 2002 to 2015, the global market for creative goods doubled from $208 billion to $509 billion. China's export of creative goods drew a double the global average during this period. Other countries also stimulated growth in the sector, including India, Singapore, Turkey, Thailand, 
and Mexico. And today we have three new members uh, to the honor roll. Uh, we thank Australia, Canada, and Latvia for paying their dues in full with their regular budget dues for 2019. We thank them. And how many on the honor roll? We're still in single digits. Can't be that hard to guess. Six. You, you guys are all pathetic. All right. Uh, let's go on that positive note. Yes, sir. Um, yes, Stefan. You said that General Kamayert, sorry, on Yemen, um, was shuttling between mm -hmm. the two sides. Is this because the two sides are not willing to be in the same room at this stage, or is this for logistical reasons? Uh, I think if the two sides were able and uh, willing to be in the same room, uh, they would. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, Stefan. Um, as of today, FIREM, former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia, announced that they are the North Republic of North Macedonia. Uh -huh. It's officially now they call themselves like that. I know you mentioned and you did make some comments, and I'm fishing for another one that was fresh on that from the Secretary General. What does he say? Having in mind that the Greeks uh, has, uh, st have still to vote in their parliament and to adopt it. No, I think I would refer you to what uh, Mr. Nimitz said, and the Secretary General fully backs uh, what he said, which is the, the latest uh, development uh, in the vote taken in Skopje is a very positive, uh, is a very positive move, and we look forward to the full completion of the agreement. You say to Greeks, what I just said now that we look forward to the full completion. Steve, thanks. Um, on the uh, provisional electoral results in the Democratic Republic of Congo, uh, Congo, SADC, the regional body has called for a government of national unity and a possible political negotiated political settlement. SADC has also mooted a possible recount at the discretion of authorities in the DRC. What do you make of those pronouncements by the regional body? Look, it's not for me to, to comment on what SADC uh, says. We, comp we continue, obviously, to follow the discussions, uh, the developments closely. Uh, we are in touch uh, on the ground with all the relevant stakeholders. I think what is important is that the constitutional process follows its, uh, its way. Uh, we've, seen, uh, we've seen the latest developments on, on that end. It is also important that everybody remains uh, calm and uh, we will continue to follow and support what is a Congolese own process in whatever way we can. Does the UN though foresee any role for itself or the organization, its good offices, in possible mediation talks between the political parties in that country? As always, the UN remains available for good offices should all sides request it, and that's valid for any situation. Evelyn and then. Thank you, Steph. Um, the State Department says that it's uh, eased uh, some of its sanctions on North Korea, allowing humanitarian goods in and humanitarian workers. Is there any sign that this has happened? Uh, I not. Uh, I, I'll have to check. Uh, with right. Secondly, colleagues. can you check uh, your your honor roll is on uh, regular budget, correct? Uh, that is correct, ma'am. Can you eventually do an honor roll on peacekeeping? Uh, we, th that data is available. We, we'll, we'll get that for you. Uh, uh, thank you, Steph. I have a question on, uh, on Venezuela. Uh -huh. um, currently, there is an unprecedented uh, situation happening there. Um, there uh, the president of the National Assembly is pretty much uh, uh, doing or calling for uh, the nation to follow him as he says that he... Uh, is um, is the new president of the nation, and that happened shortly after uh, Maduro sworn uh, for a new period or uh, for a new mandate. And over the weekend, the president of the National Assembly was briefly detained, uh, creating some level of uncertainty in the nation and increasing concerns throughout the region. So I wonder if the SG has been following all of these latest developments in Venezuela, and if the new and if the president of the National Assembly has reached out to the UN for any kind of talks, discussions, or support. Sure, I'm, I'm not aware that uh, that the president of the National Assembly has reached out to us, but we can, uh, we can check. I think the events uh, over the weekend, including his uh, temporary uh, detainment, uh, highlights the, um, uh, the polarization 
that we're seeing in Venezuela. Uh, we call on all actors to refrain from any rhetoric or actions that may escalate the already existing tensions. And we reiterate our conviction that the road to recovery depends on Venezuelans themselves and their state institutions, including the National Assembly, searching for a peaceful negotiated solution that strengthens democratic governance, human rights, and the rule of law in Venezuela. And of course, I think, as I said, the Secretary General is following this closely and I think remains concerned about what we're seeing in Venezuela. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Stefan, uh, two questions. One, will there be a readout of the Secretary General's uh, meeting with the with Mr. Mahmoud Abbas? Of, uh, we will effort to get you one. Okay. The other thing that I want to ask, the peace process that, as you have described between the Yemeni parties and the uh, opposing or the Saudi colleagues, are they going on or are there any differences? As you just uh, mentioned earlier, they're just going on smoothly? Uh, smoothly is not a term that I would use. Uh, there remains differences. Uh, there are two levels here, really. Uh, on, on first, there is the implementation of the agreement in Stockholm, which Mr. Kamert is leading on the ground in Hadeda, uh, under the overall uh, political direction of the uh, of the special envoy of Mr. Griffiths, who continues his discussions with all the parties to try to get them back to a table for an overall political agreement, uh, and that's the situation that we're in now. We done. Um, uh, Thanks, Stefan. Uh, so there's a new um, caravan forming in Honduras, gearing up to come to the, uh, up, heading up north, coming to the United States. I was wondering if the UN or UNHCR have any contingency plans on how they'll be dealing with uh, these people, and if um, are you guys discussing with U.S. Uh, border authorities? Uh, I'm not aware of any discussions with uh, the U.S. Uh, border authorities. There may be. Uh, I know our colleagues, I think at UNICEF and, and UNHCR and others, have already have a presence in, uh, in Mexico, and we'll try to get an update from them as to what contingency plans they may be doing in addition. Yes, sir. Stefan, just to, uh, one quick follow-up and then a question. Uh, is the offices of uh, Mr. Nimitz are now closed? Is he no. still... They're so he closed. continues? He, he continues. Until when? Well, until he no longer continues. <laughs> but no, I, I don't, I mean, no, I don't I mean, cannot I don't, I don't put mean, that in the story. I, 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 don't um, mean, I, I don't mean to be, to be smug. Uh, we have, the, the process is not completely done. So Mr. Nimitz's good officers, his mandate continues. When it's going to be done that you are going to I, be I'm, I'm just, I can only speak for the present. Okay, and, and another yeah, one if uh, I can. Yes. All right. yeah. uh, regarding that uh, G77 that you mentioned, there is an article in the, in the media reports uh, that the, in continuation the, the third world countries are not well represented at the UN and they are somehow blaming the chief, I mean the, the UN Secretary General. In fairness to Mr. Guterres, they were blaming Mr. Ban Ki-moon and Kofi Annan, etc. So what say you on that criticism? How you respond? I think the the Secretary General uh, has made uh, the greatest effort uh, to have a geographical balance, to have a gender balance in his senior uh, in his senior ranks, and I think if you look at the uh, at the total at the numbers of if the members of his senior management group, you will find a broad geographical balance. Masoud, then we'll come back. Thank you, Stefan. On this, uh, President Trump's threat to Turkey that it uh, devastated economically. Do you have any comments on that at all? No, sir. Okay, so another, another question I'm gonna ask you was about uh, Rohingya. Uh, are, has the special rapporteur not been allowed? Will that be, will he or she be allowed to go back to the Rohingya to, de to what you call Myanmar to de deal with the Rohingya question? We very much hope that she will be allowed to visit the country uh, when she needs to. Yes, uh, I'm sorry, it's a follow-up, and I'm not sure if, it, if you already answered that. Uh, over the weekend, uh, the Houthis have accused uh, General Kamarat that he have a, a special agenda that he wants to, to uh, bring into the situation in Hodeida and in, and in Yemen, which is uh, carried an accusation for the UN 
Any comments from the Secretary General? The only on special this? agenda that uh, General Cameron has is to the implementation of the Stockholm Agreement, is to bring calm to Hodeida, to create a humanitarian space in which our colleagues can do their work and help the Yemeni people who have been suffering uh, so horribly for so long. Uh, any developments on uh, completing the uh, manpower needed for General Camera to uh, undertake his No, sir, uh, not, not uh, I mean, I think I, I gave, I think you were still here, I gave an update on, on him, uh, but no, no update besides what I've already said.